Hey, it's David here from Site3D, and I'm going to quickly show you how to run a drainage simulation in Site3D. So on the plan here, we have our full site design with our um, roads, our drainage, our catchment areas, ponds, and our outfall. The 3D view is stretched by five times, so we can just see the uh, drainage underneath the road systems a bit clearer. And uh, what we can do is we can just run a drainage simulation straight away. Go to this button here and hit the run storm simulation. And then in here we can choose which type of um, storm we, want, we wish to simulate, in which case we can hit FSR and we can click on the map and actually get our M560 ratio R values. Or we can go to the FVH99 and type in our CDs, D1s, D2, D3, all those values. Or we can go to FVH13 and actually import a CSV file straight away. Um, you can also then choose your storm durations, your return periods, and whether you're wanting the summer uh, or winter or both um, events simulated and their sort of corresponding runoff coefficients, the CV values, and our global time of entry. Once you've then chosen which network or networks you want to simulate, you just hit run simulation. That will then go through all those simulations. It's done 54 storms in this one. It'll then show you a PDF report with your company name, the user that actually ran this simulation, the date and the project name up here. We have our sort of physical network details. We have the manhole schedule, the pipe schedule, the flow controls um, or pond structures in this case. Uh, then we have these simulation settings where it tells us which storm we actually ran or the storms. So in this case, the uh, durations, the return periods, the global time of entry, uh, the CV values. In this case, we actually have a minimum and a maximum value for our summer because we actually have varying CVs. You can specify them per area. And the winter has a single global one for the moment and we're using FEH 99 information. Then we are shown all of the actual events that we ran and simulated with their average intensity and their runoff and flow continuity percentages. This will tell us basically whether we had any unstable flow. If you see any ambers or red values in here, then you may need to actually have a look at your drainage system to see if there's any reason why that's happening. From here, we can then scroll down and see our actual simulation results grouped per return period. Um, so in this case, for the two year, we have all of the storms around for the two year return period. And we can see the manholes in order of connection. So from the head of the run down to the outfall with the critical storm event annotated for each one with their time when the actual peak actually happened for that particular manhole. In here, we can see then the levels, the depths, the inflows. And if there was any flooding, we'd see the amount that it was flooding by. We can scroll down and we can then see the same for the 30, period, uh, 30 years. And we can also then see the same for the 100 year afterwards. This one actually has 40% climate change as well. So in this one, we can see we've got some different colors. We can see flood risk, surcharged, and actual red for flooding to indicate that we actually need to look at this. So we can then make some changes. So we can go through our networks. We can add in our actual, um, uh, we can add in some flow controls. It may be that we wish to restrict the speed, the uh, outflow here. We can even go into the um, report details and have a look at this. So we can actually change the company name, the user that ran it, the actual project name. So I'm just going to call this one for site design, the uh, flood risk freeboard and what the actual report sections we want to show. Click OK and it'll make those changes. Um, we can actually have a look at the replay. So we can go into here, select the network we wish to replay, choose which storm we wish to view. So we can scroll through here and say, I want to have a look at a 30 year return period with a 15 minute winter. And then you can see it suddenly starts changing the colors as soon as we hit play. So in this case, what it's telling us here is uh, on the plan, on the 3D view, you will see that we actually have colored pipes. This is indicating the water depth in each individual pipes as it gets to full. You can see it goes to red and it will go from green to, uh, through to blue to red through those. Um, <clears throat> we can also see the uh, long section. So we can click on the long section button here and say, I want to see the long section from this manhole to this manhole. And then you can see the amount of water that actually is stored in each one of these. So if we actually have a look through here, we can see this also replays with the rest of the views. So you can see what's happening in the storm throughout all of the views at the same time. You can hit play, you can hit pause, you can skip forward, you can skip back, you can grab the slider bar and move it around and 
see when your uh, most interesting events happening. Um, you can then zoom in and have a look at what exactly what's happening. Now you'll also notice that we actually have some red lines. This is the high level of the water mark that will go through. So the, either the storm will have gone up to that and back down again, or it'll be going up to that value. But that is the maximum water height for this particular event. So you can see what's happening and then you can make some um, changes to your network. So in this case, we can go into the general areas and we can click on the properties and we can have a look at one of these over here, say for this particular building where we have urban creep, you can type in your urban creep percentage. So we can say there's 10% urban creep in this one. And we also have our summer and winter CV values, which are um, can be overridden per area. So by default, it'll be using the global value, which was specified on the simulation window. Or you can say I'm overriding this one and I'm gonna make this one, uh, I'm gonna make this one over here. 0.9 for the winter as well. Once you've made those changes, we can then go into the other sides of things and we can say, I want to add in a flow control on this one over here, go into our drainage, go to our manhole properties on that manhole here, and I can add in my flow control. So we can type in, uh, we can choose which one, which type of uh, flow control we wish to add. So a weir, orifice, vortex, or flow control, and uh, depth flow flow control. Uh, in this case, I want to do a depth flow where you can do a custom flow control um, and you can hit insert. Now I can click on these and type in the actual depth and flow uh, values for an entire network. Or if you have it, you can go to a um, CSV file and you can copy them. So in this case here, I've got a uh, vortex flow control data set that I can just copy and hit paste into the actual um, depth flow hydrograph here. Click OK and then I can rerun my simulation. It's remembered all the same values from before, hit run simulation and let it do it. Once it's finished that, again, it tells you how many it ran. We can relook at all the information. Now you can see we've actually got our depth flow control inside the information here for the physical network. And then we can have a look at the continuity, make sure all the storm events ran okay and then we can see the actual results. So our two year is still okay. Our 30 year is still surcharged, which is okay. And our <clears throat> 100 year is 100 year with 40% climate change, has some flood risk, has some surcharging, has a little bit more flooding this time. So we may want to look at this and decide how we want to deal with that one. If, if we're okay with the flooding, that's fine. If we want to, we could then use that volume here that's uh, shown on the window here to update the size of pipes or the size of the pond and um, rerun our simulation for it. Thanks for watching.